Anyway, thank you for coming to the first ever version of Broadway Obsessive Disorder. For those of you who don't know what Broadway Obsessive Disorder is, I'll give you a quick rundown. So basically it is a mental disorder where you automatically revert your brain to Broadway at any moment, any word, and you just happen to break into song <laughs> at any random moment of the day. As I said, I can usually relate any conversation back to Broadway. So give me a theme or an idea and I'll see if I can think of a Broadway number. Hills. <laughs> <laughs> the hills are alive with the sound of music. That's an easy one. Anyone else? Orphans. Orphans? <laughs> well, I've got a couple for that. You can be. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you tomorrow. Or the other one that comes to mind is, how does a bastard orphan, <laughs> yeah. son of a whore and a Scotsman, <laughs> dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean. Okay, I'm not going to wrap that up. <laughs> Anybody else going to wrap for me? Green. Green? Um... Uh, it was, oh yeah, we'll automatically go to Something has changed within me Something is not the same My first real memory of me having this problem And it was the big kahuna It was Phantom of the Opera Again, I'm not going to sing a song from Phantom Because I'm not an operatic soprano um, But I have to tell you the story for you to understand how deep the obsession goes So when I was, I guess the movie came out when I was about 13, it was like just after year seven, summer going into year eight, and we went to see the movie and that was it. I was hooked. I listened to the soundtrack on repeat, over and over and over again. And I was so obsessed that, I don't know if anyone remembers, when you were in high school, you used to have these like school diaries. And this is before like Facebook and YouTube and, and all that where you could easily access anything you wanted. So I had to go on Google and I printed all of like, the pictures from the movie off and stuck them all over my diary. And then a friend of mine gave me a really horrible burnt DVD copy of the movie. So one of those ones where they filmed it at the cinema and then like it had this horrible greenish colour to it and really bad sound. And they had actually cut out the lead song. So let's just skip from when she went through the mirror to when the like the um, manager started singing notes. You know, the far too many notes from in my, yeah, that whole bit. So just skipped out Phantom of the Opera, skipped Music of the Night, but I didn't care. I just like watched it every night for months. Of, like real obsessions that I had before the end of high school, which is a long time ago, um, was, I mean, there was a wicked phase. We all had the wicked phase. Where you just like couldn't get enough. I may have seen it ten times, eleven times, but we're just gonna skate right past that. Uh, for me, what stands out is the first introduction to Sondheim, the man, the myth, the legend that he is, and into the woods. I want to play every single part in that show. The next show that I do is just Into the Woods, starring me, in every single part, even the male parts. <laughs> child for warmth and a baker for bread and a prince for whatever. Never! It's these woods. Many of my Broadway people might be familiar with this. I like to call it the car musical moment. I mean, James Court has technically rebranded it as carpool karaoke, but I like to call it the car musical moment which is when you are driving down the road and an absolute Broadway banger comes on. And all of a sudden there is a full Broadway musical going on in the car. Like with you playing every single part of whatever's on, but you are in that moment. For me, the main one that stands out was about 10 years ago, I was 18, just got my license, just done my first two shows, and I'm driving around the streets of Morty Alec with Don't Rain On My Parade blasting out of the speakers. Oh yeah. In that moment, I was Fanny Bryce. It was happening. I mean the Leah Michelle version, but I was Fanny Bryce. And then I pull up to the lines and I look to my left. That's not my left, that's my left. Uh, look to my left and I make eye contact 
weird the person in the car next to me. <laughs> but I just continue to live my best life. Don't tell me not to live just in butter. Life's candy and the sun's a ball of butter. Don't bring around. Who told you you're allowed to rain on my parade? I'm at your outfit. I'll beat my drum. <laughs> so, I danced growing up, on and off. Uh, not Definitely not a ballerina. Uh, but when you start uni, obviously you have to do all the dancing. And they also ask you to put yourself into three different categories. So you've got the people who are actors who can sing. So people with not necessarily the biggest or most amazing voice, but can really make you feel an emotional number. You've got the people who are dancers who can sing, aka the people who get all the roles. <laughs> because all like a director and choreographer wants is someone who can basically nail a dance number and hold a harmony at the same time. And then the rest of us, singers who can move. <laughs> Move. What, what does that even mean? <laughs> move. Like, I can definitely move. I can, I can dance. I can pick up a dance routine and like dance it out. But I'm not like a technically trained dancer who can kick the leg over the head. Like that's not going to happen. Mama, it's a